Everybody is making 100 days videos and trying to find a unique twist on the formula and building a good mod pack can set your video up for success or doom it to failure. I've made several of these and I have a very specific way that I go through and try to make everything work. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. This is how I put together a 100 days mod pack and why I picked the mods that I did. Cause that's important. Having an idea of what your video is going to be like and hitting a few basic points. How you want your video to look, how you want your video to play, and what things you want to be able to uncover. And before you ask, no, I'm not gonna tell you what that's about. That is a conversation for a different kind of video, but I am gonna tell you how I did it. So a little bit of behind the scenes knowledge if you're interested, I'll save that for the end. So I'm gonna be breaking down everything for you in a quick video, just teaching you how to build a better mod pack. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna support the channel and see future 100 days, a new one is coming very soon, make sure to subscribe, it's free. And if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe later and double check because YouTube might've unsubscribed you anyway. All right, so if you've downloaded my desert only mod pack, curse link is down in the description. You have a copy of it. Yours is gonna be called like Lagundo's desert only world. And it's gonna have a cool image, but I made a duplicate mainly because I don't wanna risk messing up the main world and mainly so I can turn on the mods in order and show you why I picked the ones that I picked to go for the overall vibe and also some that I decided against using for one reason or another. So I knew I wanted to do a desert only world. And the first thing I picked was this mod, survivable deserts. And since we were gonna be in a desert and we had to have thirst tough as nails was the next one that I knew I was definitely going to install because that had just a lot to it. There was, there's so much, so much more. So let's load up the mod pack with just those two active. Create a brand new world, how it's made. Now this is one thing that I never actually figured out was how to do the single biome via a resource pack. There was a resource pack already available for oceans. I tried to do that for deserts and it didn't work. You still got oceans everywhere. They are what Minecraft considers a core biome. Whereas if you have only a one biome kind of thing, you get just a lot of deserts. Oh wow, <laughs> this is really cool. This this looks kind of awesome. So hey, if anybody wants to fight underneath the uh, Desert Millennium Falcon, there's your seed. So we spawned right next to a village. This is great, we can get a little bit. The only problem we'd have is wood. Wood is a huge problem. You can't get wood in a desert whatsoever. Even if you were to go to a desert village, whereas most villages have logs, desert villages are made out of sandstone. So there's nothing in here for you. But because of our mods, we can get the cactus needles and the boards, get a little bit of sticks. And then this is how we were able to go ahead and make the boards, which was really important that you could then combine with the nails to get planks. I did see something else, which I am really upset that I apparently didn't know, but you can make grass from dirt. I, I, I have to try this. I have to try this because I spent so long searching for silk touch in the, in the world. Oh my goodness. Ah, you're kidding me. That would have been so much better. Oh, I don't even have my zoom. I didn't even put that into the mod pack yet. All right, so now we have a functional desert. You can get wood, right? You need more ways to be able to do that. The more villagers mod has a forester option, which is the main one that I really needed for this. I've really come to use this basically everywhere, but more villagers was the next thing I knew I was gonna want, as well as being able to do just enough items so you can see all of your mods and all of the items and everything else that you need to be able to actually work well with all of these different mods, as well as where is it? Yes, this Young's Extras. So this person is responsible for so many amazing mods and so many amazing things. This is just a bunch of extra things 
for deserts. It improved the wells into wishing wells. It's the mod responsible for adding the obelisks and a whole bunch of extra things just to give the desert a lot more variety. So that was the next couple mods I installed. I also took a look at this mod, No More Nether, the desert edition, which would make it so that you would never need to go to the nether to complete the game. And I'm gonna turn this on in a desert only world so you can see why I didn't use this one. And okay, so right off the bat, you might have an idea why I decided to not use the No More Nether mod. <laughs> so certain mods, they're designed with assumptions, right? You would expect if you needed to go to a desert to find something like a pile of glowstone or some nether brick, or some soul sand, some soul soil. I think this one might be a blaze spawner. Yep, this one's a blaze spawner. So you can see if you had a world that was only desert and these things only spawn in deserts, uh, they appear just a little bit too frequently and the world looked kind of ridiculous, which is why I didn't include this mod, obviously. This is, uh, this is way too much. So with not going to the nether pretty much out of the picture, it then became, okay, how do I make the desert more interesting? I started looking at this mod, the desert upgrade mod. It adds a bunch of factions and other things to deserts. It has the same problem. Once it once it's a one biome world, it throws off a lot of these mods. So instead, I just focused on adding interesting things to the world. Create is my go-to mod to add a lot of ability to make different things and do things in a unique way. And then once I was looking for better things, again, going back to Young and everything that they do, better dungeons. This thing's a core, I think, of all my mod packs from this point going forward. So better dungeons was something that I was gonna turn on immediately. As soon as I did that, I'm like, oh, there's better mine shafts as well. So let's turn on better mine shafts and better strongholds. And now I'm thinking, okay, if we're doing that, we should add something that makes the end more interesting. So it adds all of these extra little plants to the end, some extra chorus blocks. And as long as we were looking for dimension upgrades, there's also this deep dark dimension, which was available, which you get by breaking bedrock, which I added and didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how I'd actually get there. And this deep dark mod, this thing scares me. This all just kind of sounds wet and squishy and just, ew. This was actually before Minecraft Live, where we found out about the deep underground cities and the warden getting delayed and everything else. So I'm gonna keep this mod in future mod packs until the actual deep dark is available. But this place, it was totally unexpected. My reaction to getting in here was genuine and it was scary. But now we're seeing the obelisks, which are scattered throughout the world. We have desert temples. We have these little bits of ponds, which are set up visually what I was hoping for. You have the desert villages. Oh, that one has a monolith right in the middle of town. That is, this one is ominous looking. And there's another one right there. And another, wait, is that? No, that's a ruined portal. But now we're coming up with the desert that looks interesting. It's just different enough from what we know, but it's not, it's, it's very empty. It's very boring. So now let's talk mobs. All right. Now we have a world, but nothing in it, nothing interesting. So Alex's mobs is a good place to start for lifestyle and just animals and creatures that will be flying around and doing things. So let's turn that one on. While we're looking at it also, I found these Valhelsia structures, which would make just a little bit more interesting things. There are structures for every biome in this mod pack, but these sort of desert oasis houses were I think perfect. It's the only one from this mod path that I actually ended up using because of biomes. So we turned that one on. I actually turned that on really late in using the thing. Once we started talking about that though, fast leaf decay was pretty much essential. And we're talking about things that will add life to the world. So goblin traders, yes please, this sounded hilarious. Being able to find my way around meant journey map 
and just enough resources. Meowsy's Mods is another one that I added, and that mod was responsible for the Gusters, which was kind of the most iconic mob in the entire playthrough. It just didn't look great for a thumbnail. It was just sand on sand, but 100% Gusters for me defined this playthrough. Since we're doing modded and we want it to be different, Spartan Shields and Weaponry, so I have different things to craft, and doing the damage indicators to make it look really interesting. Just because now we have a ton of mods that are installed, we need to figure out how they work. And we need to be able to carry all of this stuff, right? So uppers for redstone being easier and useful backpacks, because these things are stupid broken and stupid cheap. But considering the mod pack and considering the fact that I'd be in a desert, leather was going to be really hard to come by. So it made sense. And it was a nice early game goal just to get leather to be able to get to say like a medium backpack, which let me then carry around basically everything I needed. But I had to work for it. Last things was apple skin. So that way I would know how well the food I was eating would work. And then just to add something that I've never played with before, blood magic. Looking back on it was a really bad idea really really a really bad idea to be fair i never realized how this worked because i was taking way too much damage with food and water so that was bad and actually astute viewers might have noticed this book just kind of thrown off in the side when i started the video i think i went like this to it really quickly uh this is just given to you by one of the mods so that way you'll know all about the different animals which are available but now look now we have a desert that is populated by structures and also alive these crocodiles added so much interesting things to do they were chasing me and everything we had the road runners which are just darting around the desert all the time, which apparently I could have made boots that would have given me speed too if I killed enough of them, but I was almost always at low health, so I just never wanted to kill these little things. With cactus being our main source of wood and that being everywhere, we have almost everything we could possibly want. Little oasises, which will spawn us some of the other mobs. Brazers add a little bit of just a light beacon and a light source to make the desert more dynamic. We have all sorts of additional building blocks through create. Just look at all of this stuff and that you can add and use to build up pyramids or houses or structures or so many other things. And that's not even talking about these amazing better stronghold designs and just how much better this all is. Look how expansive this stronghold is. This is by far, I think, the favorite mod out of everything that I added. Exploring this stronghold and both the loot that was inside, as well as just look at how much cooler this portal room is compared to a vanilla portal room. Now, it's not as cool as my hardcore portal room, which I'm working on over on Twitch. You should come check out sometime. But it's something, and this is just so much nicer than what we get, than what we get in vanilla. And look at how close to the surface it gets. Oh, and there's a village right there. But in reality, this mod pack has so much more in it than what I did in 100 days. And I was able to tell a good story with it because of how I built it. I set up mods for the early game goals, the mid game goals, and then the late game goals, like killing the ender dragon. And then I threw everybody's expectation on its head and I didn't go to the full 100 days because if you do a twist ending on day 100, people are expecting it. And okay, right? I really flubbed the lines of what's going on, 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 what is going on? But for the very, very ending of the video, all you really have to do is walk your way over towards the obelisk and then you open up your inventory and... Huh. That was weird. New 100 days coming soon, everybody. Be good to each other. Talk to you soon. Bye.